You should be able to see the diagram that I've put up here, right? Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Cool. So one of the things you're going to encounter um, in any of your interviews with Fang is, first off, almost all of them use kind of a panel style interview, right? So initially, you'll probably have like a phone screen um, pre predominantly by like a recruiter, and they're just kind of making sure that you're aligned, you're aware of the role and all that. And then usually you'll get a technical screen right after, which is also usually a phone session. Sometimes it's a Zoom. Um, and from there, you'll you'll kind of usually go through your own background and, and more talk about yourself and your experiences uh, and maybe ask a couple questions here and there. Um, but it's really more um, kind of dis discussion style than actual Q&A. Um, and then when you get through that, you'll go through, you know, the different loops or panels and each of them do it different. Um, Amazon's is kind of a, a, a panel uh, or a series of interviews where you're doing one on ones with four different people. Uh, and then they kind of meet up and, and chat after the fact. Google's uh, is very, very similar. And I think Facebook actually does them kind of all at once or together. But um, part of that for all of them is you'll have a whiteboarding session or a technical presentation. Um, and on the, in the case of Amazon and Google, I'm not entirely sure about Facebook or Apple, um, you'll typically be given an architecture ahead of time. Uh, and it'll look something like this in terms of detail, depending on what cloud platform, the icons might be different or where the labels might be different. And you'll get presented with a series of questions or kind of a scenario. Um, so citing mine, right, when I joined Amazon, uh, I got an architecture similar to this, and I got asked the question, you know, your customer is trying to make um, this more resilient or redundant. What kinds of changes would you make in this architecture um, to make it more fault tolerant? Uh, another question I got was, um, you know, if your customer is looking to get uh, to pass a PCI audit in in some near kind of term, what are some areas that you would look to um, kind of dive into or assess from a security standpoint uh, to rec to identify what kinds of things they might need to do to ensure that they're compliant um, with PCI regula regulations? And what kinds of recommendations would I make from a security perspective um, to kind of address that architecture. For something that's more TPM or red or, or blue team, you're probably going to see an architecture diagram like this and be asked a question like, uh, you know, how would you conduct a threat assessment or a threat model of this application? Or what would be some key areas that you would try to um, kind of assess or, or pen test against? Uh, or what would be some specific areas that you would recommend or, or security controls that you would recommend to protect this from um, a specific type of threat, whether they say an insider threat or an external threat or, or what have you. So the expectation isn't necessarily that you're just going to be like this cloud expert, hands-on kind of person that's just going to jump into the command line and implement a bunch of stuff, but you definitely need to understand like what each of these services are, at least at a high level. Right, like DynamoDB is a database. You know, archive archive to Glacier is like storage with S3, and I know S3 is storage. Okay, I know Direct Connect is like a, a tunnel from point to point. Okay, like I understand. You know, those things. You don't have to necessarily know all the ins and outs, but being able to at a high level know what types of services are like um, is important. And then taking a look at how you would perform whatever function they're asking you, again, at a high level, right? And so understanding like what regions are, what um, what the different components of, of the cloud are in terms of like redundancy and taking backups. So being able to say, well, you would want to take snapshots or you would want MFA for, you know, this or that, or talking about where you would look to uh, minimize access, right? Like, okay, I would, I would, take a look at my database there and I would make sure that I don't have, you know, users that I don't need. I would reduce the access of anything that's going to connect to this database to the bare minimum that I need. And I would set up, um, you know, like firewalls or network controls like security groups um, that would minimize the traffic that can go to that server. 
uh, so on and so forth. And so the expectation will just be for you to be able to kind of talk through that stuff. Uh, and in some cases, if you happen to go on site for whatever reason, um, or I know some of the companies are using things like Miro, actually draw on this kind of diagram and, and kind of talk through those changes will be generally how your like deep technical interviews are going to go. Quick question on the diagram. How long, how much time do you usually have to review it? Do they give it to you like that day or two days? Uh, no, it's usually quite a, quite a bit before. So uh, for Amazon, you'll typically get like a week. Uh, Google will also usually give you about a week, sometimes more. Like I haven't gone through, like I said, the, the Facebook or the meta process, but it's, it's pretty common for you to get it um, like a day or two at a minimum ahead of time. The goal is not necessarily to uh, test you like on the spot. The goal is to um, give you the opportunity to prepare ahead of time and then see what, what you can bring to the table after having that preparation. Um, and so usually you'll, you'll have a couple nights to, to kind of plan and figure it all out. Um, and then what they'll do is in addition to the questions that you were asked ahead of time, right, that might come with the scenario, sometimes they'll throw a couple curveballs. Uh, and so they might add a couple extra things. Well, what if, you know, they said they wanted to, you know, increase throughput just to the database? Or what if they want to make sure that their S3 bucket is more secure because they're going to put sensitive data in it or, or what have you. Um, and so for the most part, you'll have a lot of preparation time. And then here and there, they might throw a couple on the spot questions, but usually it's just to, those questions are usually more about like leveling or um, kind of gauging um, the depth of your experience more than like kind of a pass or fail, like should we hire or not hire this person? And so typically those curveballs are um, there to, to help determine what level you should be at. 